I decided to add multiplayer to it with about zero knowledge on a tight deadline. I'm freaking out. My exciting project was put into a shoebox. It was a scam and it has been going on for years. I would never touch this project again. Hey, hey, it's Tamara here. I'm back. This is so exciting. So as you may know, I just finished university. So happy to be back to YouTube. In this video, we're going to talk about my capstone project, which was a game, obviously, all the ups and downs. And I'll tell you a story about how I uncovered a scam at my university. Yeah. It was a wild ride. Watch till the end to find out what happened. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's backtrack to the beginning of my college life, when my hair was short and my hopes were high. At the end of my first year, one of my professors gave us an extra credit assignment to develop a game. And oh boy, was I excited. The goal was to make a digital version of the popular game Carcassonne with all the rules and scoring. Long story short, I could not finish the game back then, being a novice game dev, but I came back to it later, still couldn't figure it out, and then I came back to it again and finally made it. If you're interested in the whole story of the game, I suggest you check out my previous video about it. And I swore I would never touch this project again. But then... I just had a call with my professor. <laughs> Getting back to my Carcassonne project. Yeah, I just love torturing myself with this game, so I chose it to be my final project for university. Which is symbolic if you think of it, because I started with it and now I'm finishing with it too. So without further ado, let's get into my development journey. Technically the game was ready even before it became my Capstone project, but is there really such a thing as finished game dev project? So I did the most logical thing any game dev could do. I decided to add multiple to it, with about zero knowledge of how to do so, on a tight deadline, for the project my degree depends on. So the plan was to work on the project while I still had regular classes, so I wouldn't have to rely on the time that was actually dedicated to work on the final project. But due to all the stuff that was happening in my life, I did not start until the week before that dedicated time. Day 2 update, I made the cards sync. I also decided to keep a log of my progress because there were a lot of days when I didn't have any visible progress, but I still did something. It's 9 p.m. I was supposed to finish two hours ago. I just couldn't stop. I wanted to finish this one feature so I didn't feel like a failure at the end of the day. On my first week of development, I read up on multiplayer, watched a few tutorials and got most of the multiplayer working. If anyone's wondering, I used Unity's multiplayer solutions for everything, netcode for game objects, for syncing positions, their matchmaking service for connecting the players, along with the relay service, leaderboards, friends, all of it. Apart from the multiplayer features, I worked on the saving system and graph visualization, which was actually the key part of my thesis for this capstone project. I added proper indicators for the craft vertices, which also made the game user-friendly. I did not film much during the second and third weeks, which was like the prime time of development. I developed a hints algorithm, finished the online gameplay, added a friend system, and I kind of ran out of interesting things to do here. After I'm done with the practicum, it's gonna be like two months of just, just submitting reports on time, or they can be written like three days. It can be written like three days. three days. I want you to remember these words, because I sure did when I was grinding from dusk till dawn, finishing these damn reports. At first I was so chill, just look at me. So this week I'm working on the report that I have to submit at the end of this practicum. It's basically like a smaller version of the main capstone report. So I just started testing the game. It broke in places that I couldn't even imagine that it could break. It doesn't have buttons. It also breaks out of the game. So that's it for today. It's so stupid. So I have this debug button. The button gets disabled on the build. And guess what? I forgot to assign the button. This simple. As part of the capstone process, I had to present my project to a small committee just to show what I've done. It wasn't the big grand presentation, just a check-in before I could proceed to work on my reports. But 
Here's the thing. My project broke down the morning before the presentation. I'm freaking out because literally like the whole online gameplay is not working. One eternity later. I'm gonna win the award, the idiot of the year. <laughs> I only had this line, this one line, start client in one case when you're joining by lobby code but i also have other cases when you're using quick join or you're selecting a lobby it wouldn't start therefore it wouldn't load the scene it's working it's literally working and i actually ended up sending a video presentation of my project later that week after fixing more bugs, of course. At the same time, I had to send out the game for testing because while it was working, it still had a lot of bugs and I was pretty sure that I did not catch them all. After the development part was done, I moved on to the next part of my final project, which was a 50-page thesis about all the things that I've done in the project. Before I actually sat down and started writing this big report, I thought that it was a piece of cake. I have been working on this project for years and I knew what to write about but a thesis is not a video where you can tell your story. It has to follow a certain structure, have a certain number of pages, and use specific words and terms, but not too specific because that would mean plagiarism. I felt like my grand, exciting project was put into a shoebox. That being said, I think writing this kind of report was beneficial because it made me read through the documentation and topics that I might have overlooked before. And all that process took a really long time, because I did not make any shortcuts. On top of writing my thesis and being worried about deadlines, my city was shelled almost every other day during May 2023. So every night I would wake up around 1am from explosions. One night though, I was so tired because of the thesis that I slept through the explosions. I just remember having a very vivid dream about them. After long hours and sleepless nights, I finally submitted the finished printed thesis and it felt so good. And just as I was getting this sweet, sweet taste of freedom, I got a phone call. During my studies, I had a professor who would not accept my work no matter how much I tried. I passed the first two assignments, but for some reason, he just wouldn't let me get past the third one. I studied really hard, but he kept returning it. I suspected that something shady was going on because nobody in my whole class of 100 people got higher than a 74. I want you to remember this number, because it's important. Fast forward till the end of my studies. I was informed that I had a chance to get a diploma with honors. But here's the thing. I had two marks below 75 and you can't have any to graduate with honors. And they were from that same professor. And then you guess what? I was told point blank that I have to pay if I want that off my record. Imagine how I felt when all the hard work that I've done over the past four years was disrespected so much. Those scores weren't a coincidence, it was a scam, and it has been going on for years. The faculty very well knew about it, and did nothing. I did not pay, so now I'm a proud owner of a regular diploma, and I am so glad to put the past behind me. Wait, not so fast. I actually have to tell you about the place. I studied at the supposedly best technical university in Ukraine, Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. If you googled it, you'd probably see these beautiful old buildings, but I actually didn't study there. I studied in depressing post-Soviet buildings that are extremely freezing during the winter. And finally, the presentation day came. Oh, okay, I would record something to remember this, but my camera is dying, so I have to be super quick. I know my presentation by heart, I literally can recite my uh, speech. So the presentation is over. I think it went okay. I think it went, actually it went great because there weren't any substantial questions. So it means my presentation was good and now we're waiting for the results. <sighs> Anyways, I don't know what to expect because it can go like either way. They might try to drown me. <laughs> They told me to come teach them. <laughs>
Even though I was finished with the thesis, there were a couple of things that I just had to fix before I can actually put out the game, like fixing bugs. So I just received the first bug reports. A few bugs, uh, they're critic, but overall, I think it's okay. Making UI look good took the longest, but apart from that, life just got in the way. This past year was really tough for me. I don't think I can call this being burnt out because it was more like being depressed, but I also don't want to throw that word around so easily. Okay, enough with the bad stuff. Let's focus on the good. The new and improved version of Sunflowron is now available on itch.io to download. I'm finishing this chapter of my life and moving on to the next one. If you ask me if a computer science degree was worth it, I'd say I have yet to discover. I have always viewed this degree as a safety net because while it did touch game programming, it also tremendously limited me in my journey as a game developer. And hey, I see that some of you already typing to ask what I'm going to do next. I'll answer now. This is what I'm going to do now. YouTube and game development. Being away for so long only made me realize how much I miss it. And I'm so grateful to everyone who stayed with me this whole time. And I want to say hi to everyone new who subscribed to me. Thank you for watching till the end. Smash that like button if you're excited to see what I'm going to be working next. And comment down below about what you're watching on YouTube now. I wanted to say this for so long. See you in the next video. And we also have a lot of new people on Patreon. I want to thank everyone who supported me on Patreon and welcome new members, especially Blue Strings, Finch, Thomas Padfield, Dali Ivanov, Joshua Devan, Priya Dershini, Runner, Ryan Guyan, Happy James, Maxim, Philip Tatum, Void Zinemurf, Earl DJ CJ, Andre Liel, Yara Choi, Thomas Brooks, Pickabon TV, Tom Allen, Nikki Daniel, Joaquin, Momo, Alex N, Ahmed Alsen, ACD DDSA, Dima Horb, Chang Fox, Leonardo Brass, Not ASDF, Vector314, Nanalim, Hong Plan, Bogdan Angoran, Christopher Atkins, James Seo, Demaris, O7 Studio, Cisco Lopez, Hope C, Ronnie, Bruno Fernando, Curlon Earl Stanitz, David Rova, Christine Maynard, SSSS, Anna P. Devishu, Marina Vlachandreas, Yan Zhou, Dong Yan E, Desta Busal, Emily, Andrew Hanich, Disrol Rusla, James Black, LGGS, Jason, Michael Kroll, A N, Abbas Ali, Zach Snyder, Dan the D, Tala Babur, Louis Opel, Kostya Palovic, Goki Singh, Green T A Thidipan, Andreas, Oliver Linkashal, J U E, Micah Michaela, Paperman, Jeff Zero, Zon, Engine Evo, Mariana Twelve, Lee Vu, Nomad, Sirius, Coley, Sam. And now bye! And I forgot to turn on any of the lights. Yeah, see, this is what it's supposed to look like.